Hi everyone, uh, my name is Cathy Williams, clarinetist from Brisbane, Australia. I'm purely amateur, not professional at all. Um, I have been producing a number of instructional videos and today I wanted to talk about reeds. Um, how to adjust reeds so that they play um, and how to get the most life from your reeds, how to breathe life into a dead reed um, and how to work on a very new read. Now I have heard these urban legends, um, I know they are true, that um, some clarinetists buy a ten, you know, a box of ten reeds. Um, in my case I use Van Doren V12 three and a half. Now the thing with Van Doren reeds is a lot of them don't blow straight from the box. Um, so you'll take out the reed, wet it, stick it on the clarinet, it probably doesn't sound all that good. Now what the urban legends I've heard is that certain professional clarinetists um, go blow through the whole box um, of brand new reeds, find that only two of them walk, work and smash the rest. Now that's terrible because boxes of reeds aren't cheap. In Australian dollars you're looking at about between 40 and 45 and 50 dollars. They're not cheap. The thing is, it is very easy to be able to adjust a reed. Um, all that it takes is usually a little bit of reed rush. I've got a pile of it here. Um, you, you make slight adjustments to the reed and uh, it'll play beautifully. Often what the problem is, is the reed isn't balanced. So one side of the reed is slightly harder, has got more wood in it than the other side of the reed. So what you do is you balance out the reed and uh, the reed plays beautifully. Um, and also you might notice the reed's a little fuzzy, in which case you need to polish the back of it. Um, if the reed is way, way too hard, then you get, uh, I have a whetstone I use that I sort of run it over or you can get some very fine sandpaper, but do be subtle because reeds are, um, react um, with a great deal of sensitivity to anything you do to them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a brand new reed. Okay, so here's my box of Van Doren V12 3.5. And I kid you not, here we are, brand new reed, never been played. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in my mouth, I'm going to stick it in the coronet. It's got that reed, new reed taste. <laughs> so I'm going to stick it in the clarinet, see if it plays. <laughs> That's not too bad. That's not too bad. It's, um, it's a little hard, but uh... okay. So it's a little fuzzy now. The first thing I do when I get a new read is I wet it. Now I'll just turn this on. Ideally, you want the back of the reed to have quite a, a sheen to it, um, not so good that you can see your face in it, but what I do when I get a new rig is you want to make sure that the back of it is really smooth and really polished. So, so that's easy. Um, you get a clean piece of paper and the reed slightly wet and then you just rub it against the paper. And you might be able to see here the paper's a little bit um, shaved off. That's because um, that's because the reed has a bit of it's not quite, um, it's not, it needs to be perfectly smooth at the back for you to get the best response. So what you do, first thing I do, wet the reed, press it against the paper, quite hard actually, and uh, that's looking a lot better. Yep, that's, if you put it in a, a certain angle, that's, that's a lot better, that's a, that's a lot flatter. So let's see if this doesn't improve the sound immediately. difference that makes that's just um, that's just incredible this is actually a very playable read
actually quite reasonable. And all I've done is just wet it and rub it up against a piece of paper. Um, now, another thing, if the reed isn't playing well, although this one is, but I did notice it was slightly unbalanced on one side. And you can check that by holding it up to the light. And uh, actually, that looks pretty good. There might be slightly more wood on this side, but that's not necessarily a bad thing if the reed plays well. So, and another a way to test if the reed's harder on one side or the other, because sometimes you don't need to adjust the actual reed at all. What you do is you adjust its position on the mouthpiece. So, um, so the way to work out which high side of the reed's harder than the other is to actually angle the clarinet slightly in the mouth. So if you wanted to test out the right side of the reed, you turn it to the left. And then... So you can see that in this case, this side of the reed, the left hand side, is slightly easier to play than the right side. Now what you can do is shave the slightest bit off... Um, off the right hand side but what I do is I angle the reed slightly just ever so slightly so that there's a little bit more wood on this side you, you angle it in slightly so if this is the side that's a little bit harder to play you move it slightly to the left <laughs> so yeah I've, oh, I've done myself out of bit of work there haven't I because this is actually a very good reed <laughs> But, um, okay, we've got a good read there. Oh, and another thing I must mention is never rely on the one read. That is professional suicide. <laughs> you don't ever want to do that. Um, and I know reads are expensive, but you can see I have a whole box full of them. I mean, gosh, I probably have between 8 to 10. Thing is, reads need to be broken in. Um, when you buy new shoes, you don't wear them for 10 days straight. You, um, you know, you wear them for a few hours and maybe you put a shoe on. Same with reeds. So that a new reed changes characteristics over the first week. Um, and you don't want to do too much to it um, while it's still settling and curing, if you like. Um, so, yeah, ne and never rely on having a new reed to play your concerts. It's just, um, it's too uncertain. You want to be certain. You want reeds at various stages of their lives. Um, and you also want reeds of various hardness, softness, flexibility, depending on what uh, acoustic you're playing in or if you're playing in an orchestra or, or a recital. Um, for, a, um, for a very live um, acoustic, so one that's got plenty of reverb, you probably want a slightly harder reed, slightly meatier, um, but it, if it's a really dry room I would go for the softer reed. Um, also if you're playing in the orchestra, um, you're probably going to want a harder reed because you're playing a lot louder when you're in, in the orchestra as opposed to chamber music where you can play it slightly, yeah, it doesn't have to be quite so hard and you probably don't want it too hard. Also, different reeds work for different mouthpieces, so the more open the mouthpiece, the softer the reed that's needed, the more closed the mouthpiece, um, the, the harder reeds needed. Um, I had a beautiful Mel Bay MOL, lovely, lovely mouthpiece, very open, so you used really soft reeds. Unfortunately, my clarinets got nicked, and uh, of course I lost that beautiful MOL mouthpiece and was playing on a Charlie Vale MOM. So, um, unfortunately the MOM is actually very, very closed and here I was playing on really, really soft reeds, come to a closed mouthpiece. Well, that's a recipe for disaster. Um, and I'm now on a Selma C95130, again a very open mouthpiece, so um, I don't use reeds that are quite so hard. 